Oh, hi guys. Welcome to the fashion bunker. I'm all covered in sticky tape. I'm trying to <laughs> welcome everybody. I'm trying to uh, free myself from this. You want a bit of ASMR? Oh my God, you guys. Welcome, welcome to the fashion bunker coven. I'm trying to, you know what, you guys? Let me get to the chats immediately because like this thing is stuck to my hair. Ah. Hi everybody, welcome, welcome. Let's see who's in the chats, shall we? Oh my God, it's huge. Uh, hi everybody, Toys Box, uh, Johnny, Melly, hello, Emilio, hello, see me. Hi everybody. Can we just like say, MK, Helen, oh my God, Rich, Mitch, Robert or Robert, Toys Box, you guys, welcome everybody. And of course, uh, everybody's an, a guest of honor in the chats. But can we just acknowledge the fact that Simi has returned? Welcome, Simi. Asian Delight. Check her out on YouTube. She has a wonderful perfume channel. And also check out Omelio's wonderful perfume channel. Best reviews out there. You guys, there's a reason for all of this mess with all the sticky tape. Ah! Um, and the, because, you guys, I have dropped some hints throughout the week or throughout the days about like, what's going on? There's danger and peril in the fashion bunker today. What is it? Well, guess what? This is something I do very rarely, but since it's almost Halloween and there's a reason for this also, um, I wanted to live do a review of a fragrance with you. Now this fragrance is very particular because it is to me personally, very much connected to Halloween. Now, um, oh, look at all the hearts. Hello, hello, hello. Helen Fisher, Madonna. <laughs> Except this is all tape, you guys. I made this. <laughs> it's all tape, tape, tape. Now, does this, why is it all tape? And I love the fact that it's blending with the blue screen. So you kind of see it, but you don't. It's really trash, very 80s. Um, what do you think this could be? Why tape? And why Comme des Garçons? Because I posted that on my uh, Instagram profile, Super Dick Balls Spilled Together. Go follow me there and you're going to get all the hints dropped also for next week's live stream, Saturday live stream, uh, Countdown to Halloween. Um, oh, but while we're at it, before we do tape and Comme des Garçons and what that all means for Halloween, let's talk about, let me just drop my merch for y'all. So let me move to the background a little bit. Ta-da! Look at this, you guys. Jacob the Extract. You got time until the 31st of October. If you're into this pumpkin perfume bottle, you, where is it? You spray it here. That's the idea. And then like the perfume comes out. It's our Halloween fragrance. Uh, take of the extract merch. You could get crew necks, hoodies, t-shirts, mugs, stickers, whatever you like in the Fashion Bunker shop. A link is provided to you in the description box under this video or scrolling through this thing now or in the shelf underneath this video, but only until the 31st of October. And then as all the ghouls and monsters of Halloween, as well as spirits and ghosts vanish on the 31st, so shall this collection, unless you don't purchase it for yourself. Uh, so tape and comme des garçons. This, you guys, is what we're doing today. By the way, I've added also, uh, I'm going to review this fragrance. I'm going to open it and I'm going to review it with you guys. This is a very special perfume and it's all about tape. It's liter literally all about scotch tape, industrial tape, industrial glue. <laughs> this, so now why this for Halloween? I particularly feel that this is an oddball. You're going to see the bottle once we unbox this. It's it's like all of us freaks. It doesn't belong to anything and anybody. It doesn't belong to the society. It's always an outcast. The bottle is genius. It's designed so it can never really stand. It keeps falling down. But it's so beautiful in its imperfection. So this perfume, the whole inception of it and the whole concept of it is actually connected to the fact that we should embrace who we are, accept who we are, love who we are, the way we are, and 
those imperfections that other perceive perhaps as imperfections in reality are very strong character traits that we embrace. You catch my drift? Okay, okay, okay. So this is an eau de parfum concentration, 100 milliliters in this gorgeous box, which we're gonna unbox right now. How's everybody doing? Oh, there's so much. Oh, oh, I know why, but not gonna spoil it. Oh wait, I'm reading. Yeah, okay. Crafty legend, right? <laughs> you guys. Ooh, okay, let me open this. Oh wait, can we do the up down camera for a second? Let me show you this wonder, this magical landscape today. Da 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 da. And the sticky tape. We can actually put the sticky tape. This is like a flower. Chanel would do a camellia. We do sticky tape as a, let me see if I can put it somewhere. It won't stick for long. It's going to fly off. Whatever. Let's just put it to the side then. Okay. Let me open this. Oh, I'm so excited because honestly, I've been waiting, contemplating this fragrance for many, many years. It's a conceptual perfume, obviously. If something smells of industrial tape and sticky tape and uh, industrial glue and scotch tape, it also has other notes in there, you guys. This is just, these. this is the concept part of the fragrance. But of course it does have also other notes in there and we're gonna get to them in just a second. In fact, you know I love my, for the Halloween live streams in particular, I love, 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 love to wear, I have worn in every past Saturday as a perfume, a carnal flower by Frédéric Mal and Dominique Ropion. But, here, let me put this little thing to the side. But this week, uh, today, I have not worn any fragrance because I really want, I want to be like a virgin, you guys. You know, the skin is like completely free of everything and we're just going to, smell this purely without any other perfumes on my skin. So I have not sprayed or worn anything else. Let's see how this looks when you open it. Okay. What a waste of space. <laughs> this is all cardboard, no plastic, except the perfume is kind of wrapped in plastic. So why all the need for all this space? Is there a reason for all this, Comme des Garçons? Or is it just for aesthetics? Methinks it's just for aesthetics, but okay. Yeah, this is all attached. I mean, in its it's an abstract box. It's very, very geometric. <laughs> or well, geometric not. It's very, I would say, architectural. It could be a building. Anyway, let's close this box. It's kind of fragile. I like that it's fragile. I was actually thinking the box would be like a more mm, utilitarian looking cardboard but no it's it's a semi it's it's opaque but almost glossy cardboard yes we got a little bit of asmr okay and then we have our bottle look at that which comes in this super bizarre industrial packaging Oh, I'm living for this. You guys, check this out. It's vacuum sealed. Oh, I don't know. I'm such a sucker for stuff like this. Look at this packaging. Now again, you know, a lot of people are gonna say, oh my God, it's so ugly. How can you say it like this? Well, I love it. <laughs> it matches my hair, you guys. I could wear it as an earring or something. Um, but yeah. Uh, wait, it's such a pity. You know what? Let me just try to take a photo for this so we can like post it on Instagram later. It's an Instagram moment, you guys, because like the cut of this thing. Oh my gosh. Before I cut the vacuum in, I want to uh, photograph the packaging before, you know what I mean? Before I cut into it and then cut into it. <laughs> oh, everything's falling down. Before I cut into it, because then you guys... Uh, once it's cut open, you know, we can't redo this photo anymore. 
because all the air will come into the bottle. Okay, let me clean my camera lens a little bit. This is all happening live. Perfume, unboxing, photographing, documenting, documenting, darling, sweetie, sweetie, darling, documenting, documenting, photograph it, photograph it, photograph it for the generations to come. I actually would need scissors for this. How do I get into this? How do we get into it? We have to cut through it. Okay, you guys, let's... Why am I such a sucker for plastic packaging? You know, it's, I almost feel like, oh, it's such a pity to open it, but what, what are you going to do? <laughs> the magic <laughs> I've shaded a lot you guys I I never do this this kind of like bronzy um which might call it um like what is this hair is everywhere I never do this bronzy it's not bronzy yeah, it is bronzy makeup but I actually today for the occasion I took out of my archives. This one has been discontinued. Uh, Soleil Ton de Chanel. We are using the Poudre Libre Bronze Visage et Corp, which is basically bronzing loose powder face and body. Just so that you can see, this is like that bronziness of it and the glitter of it all. You guys, you guys, mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. no ma'am. We're living and we're inhaling. Oof, you guys. Okay. Anyway, I'm chopping it. It, it, it happening. I'm cutting. Now let's do it up here. And the oxygen enters the package slowly but surely. Our oddball, our Halloween oddball. Comme des Gasson perfume is being freed from its prison. You guys. Oh, there it is. All right, let's put the plastic aside. Let's put the little box aside as well. <laughs> Anybody want a booger? Bo box of boogers? Okay, so you see how the bottle is dented and curved. Oh, it doesn't want to stand. No. Which is exactly how it should be. It doesn't stand. So, so it's imperfect. It's full of dents and curves. It is what it is. It's an oddball. And on top of here, we have the little stopper and the little spray nozzle. Now, let me just read to you quickly from the notes what Comme des Garçons tells us about this fragrance in terms of the shape and the concept before we get to the notes, before I spray it on. There's a bit of poetry here, you guys. Um, we can find beautiful things without consciousness, a fragrance that couldn't exist in a bottle that shouldn't exist. What qualifies anything for the right to exist? Question mark. Who has the right to decide what should be rejected? Purposely taking a bottle that has been disqualified from existence and purposefully giving it its right to exist. That's the description on the Comme des Garçons website. Then... Um, we go to Fragrantica, which we always, always, all of us go to. You know, you just got to be a little bit careful because sometimes the ingredients they list are not really always right for every perfume. We should not take blindly all of their lists of perfumes, but the description that they put for this fragrance is, the fragrance itself is that of an industrialized flower to go with glue, an imaginary flower from an unknown civilization constructed linearly. The opening is composed of aldehydes and a saffroline, a saffron leathery material moving into hawthorn. Derivatives of lilac, flower oxide, styrax, and musk, and the illusor or the, mm, the illusory notes of industrial glue and brown scotch tape. From Ray Cavacubo, one expects the unexpected. Comme des Garçons was launched in 2011. The nose behind this fragrance is Antoine Maison Dieu. 
hope I pronounced the name correctly. Antoine, perdonez-moi if I butchered your name. I. So that's a little bit of the backstory. Now let's finally get to sniffing this baby for Halloween. An oddball. Gonna spritz it in this area. Such a tiny little nozzle here. I wonder if it's gonna work properly. Let's see, I'm so excited. I, as you can see, we, we spritzed. You guys, this is a little puddle. Oof. Okay, you guys. Mm. Is it possible to do a mukbang with perfumes? Yes, it is. We're doing it right now. We are devouring it. Not eating it with the mouth, but with all the olfactory senses. Oh, okay. You know, I've been looking... Because usually, if, if I go that extra mile to prepare hair, makeup, everything... Even the lipstick is kind of the color shade of, of this concept of tape. If I go that extra mile to present something so special like this, you best believe I also do my research. And online, really, on YouTube, nobody reviewed it. There are a couple of channels, well, actually only one, that spoke about it just fleetingly a couple of years ago, but without giving it, I think, the proper merit and attention that uh, it deserves. Of course, this is not the perfume you're going to wear on a daily basis because it it's born to be synthetic it's born to be odd it's born to make you question <laughs> a lot of things i don't want to say your existence because i mean eden makes you question more your existence i guess it's more of a kind of existential fragrance not comparable at all to Womanity. But, you know, Womanity is here because it's our alien pillar that matches very well the mood of Halloween. So it's kind of brings us good luck. It's also our lightsaber. So it's always here on a Saturday. But uh, this one is just like a... This is... You know what? Let's begin by saying this about the journey that Comme des Gassons is going to take us through tonight. It is born as a true niche fragrance. This, to me, is what niche should be. You know? Not the 1,050 millionth version of Oud and Rose. It, it's, we're, I'm, I'm so done with that. This, oh look, we can, ha we can have its little tape of bed. Uh, bed of tape. Because at the end of the day, um, I don't see me. Are you are you with us in the in the chat section? Because I wanted to quote you from one of your videos. You know, because this is sophistication. This is class. This is where it's at. <laughs> That's what Simi said once. Oh man, I love her videos so much. Um, this is what niche should be. It's pushing the boundaries, it's going places and in directions that nobody else pushes, nobody else dares push, you know? It doesn't have to smell like something immediately pleasant, but it makes you think, it opens your mind, it makes you go places, you know, with, with your thoughts and with the whole poetry that is a fragrance. That's what niche should be. But a lot of these perfume houses have forgotten that. Niche has just become a quick way of earning money upping prices for fragrances, making them cost more than they really should, just for the sake of the almighty dollar or pound or euro or whatever currency uh, you're living with and uh, purchasing with. And yes, of course, this is this costs money, but uh, considering that um, this one is around 95 between 95 euro or 85 pounds, I think 95 euro and 100 ten dollars maybe buying a hundred milliliter bottle so it's literally less than you know so 100 ml as you can see there is less than 100 euro that's that's the idea of it now 100 ml from another niche brand like frederick mal would cost us almost 300 so this is it could be even cheaper but 
it, considering that you're paying for the brand as well. So it is Comme des Garçons and it is, it is what it is, you guys. It's, it's telling us that we have to think, 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 think. Now, what do we think <laughs> when we smell it? Okay, I am loving it. First of all, that initial blast of tape, it's a concept of tape, you guys. It's not like literally this, my wig smells more of tape than the perfume. The perfume does have something chemical. It has been said to have this reminiscence of um, newly opened 80s, like a Game Boy from the 80s or um, NES, like Super Nintendo or Nintendo. Like that, well, Super Nintendo came in the 90s, but the NES, the geek in me talking, or a newly opened computer, mm, to me, not really. Um, I do get florals that are um, where the perfumer does not wish to lie about their origin. Like, that means the perfumes are there to represent themselves as synthetic concoctions. So to me, this smell feels like a extremely synth synthesized, <laughs> synthetic flower, a synthetic floral, uh, and not really metallic, mind you. You know, we have this metallic opening note in, for example, the of, of the latest fragrances that have been released, Sauvage, uh, the Eau de Toilette, released a couple of years ago. Not really talking about the pure perfume, but the Eau de Toilette, the first release. That one is metallic, you guys, metallic. Also, if we want to talk about um, a Chypre um, 70s metallic uh, miracle, uh, Rive Gauche by Yves Saint Laurent, that's a metallic opening. But of course, that's a different concept. It's a more 70s opulent floral with a metallic aldehydic kind of um, tone to it. This one has aldehydes as well. However, the metallic note here is not of, of blood. You know how, how blood tastes? We're, we're in Halloween. We can talk about how blood tastes. I mean, you know. Anyway, how do I know how blood tastes? Forget it. Let's just change topic. Um, this doesn't have that metallic smell. It has a synthetic floral subdued dry powdery tone to it it's almost as if the powdery tone solidified into a plastic shell that covers the smell of a fragrance i would describe it that way it's as if the perfume itself is living underneath this 80s shell like packaging you know 80s i love 80s packaging in general i think it's amazing um most of the products here are not really from the 80s everything is redone in modern times, but if we were to come pretty close to the 80s, I would say My Pet Monster, which has just been re-released. Oh, I love My Pet Monster. This is kind of a, the original My Pet Pon Monster was a furry big toy, and this is kind of a, from a Super 7, the re-edition of My Pet Monster, but kind of this type of aesthetic, this is very 80s, you see. This type of use usage of color and, and, and how everything works together strong intense poppy colors quite different to how marketing brand marketing and packaging works today mm. this is 80s to me even though it was released in 2011 it's it smells like the fragrance is covered with a solidified powdery floral shell in slightly beige hues it's like a mix of what my wig is it's like this you know, this brown tape and transparent tape mixed together. That's the color of it. And in fact, it is the color of this liquid as well. Of course, with this camera, you can't really see it that well. But if I put it down on the table, you see a little bit more that slight yellowy, beigey hint or hue to it. That's the color of the plastic. Now, um, as it's developing on my skin, it's pungent, but but floral, flor, a floral pungent um, sense to it. Let's get too quickly to the uh, top notes. You know, we got our aldehydes, leather, and saffron in the opening. 
And then um, we have Hawthorne, which I think most people, just because they read about this perfume, that it is all about the tape and uh, the glue. So, of course, they inv if you tell a person, this smells like that, of course, they're going to imagine it. And then they're going to feel like, oh, OK, yeah, of course, I smell it. I smell it, even though maybe it doesn't smell that way. So, I, you know, most of the people put the industrial glue as the top note that they smell out of this one. But to me, what uh, is more important than that glue concept is the Hawthorne. Uh, that, that's what I smell here a lot. Uh, then we have a derivatives of lilac. <laughs> that is so derivative of this perfume. They use a derivative of lilac, which is basically a synthetic version of lilac. That one is also quite present for my, for my nose. Covered with that powdery... Now, that powdery plastic shell that I mentioned, that to me is the leather. It's like a suede. It's like that powdery leather. It's not a glossy leather. It's a suede. It's one of those beautiful, soft, typical for late 60s and throughout all the 70s, that type of suede with that beautiful, light beige hue. That That's what I get from this one. And... Um, what else we got in here? Um, what does it tell us? There should also be... A Styrax and Musk. And then, of course, base notes are brown scotch tape and industrial glue. Interesting that they list brown scotch tape and industrial glue in the bottom, bottom notes, because those kind of, as the perfume develops, now, this is not um, first impressions uh, video. I have tried and worn this one in the past. I just never purchased it really uh, before. So I can tell you, as this one dries down, it becomes more floral and warm and simpler it's very interesting how it opens up in this complex mind-boggling almost way but then as time passes by it becomes almost comforting and it does move it reins itself in closer to the skin and it becomes uh, to me lilac haw hawthorn hawthorn lilac and i would dare say the musk is it's a very synthetic musk but the musk in here can be headache inducing <laughs> if you overspray it like i literally you know put a puddle here uh it can be a little bit headachey so i you don't have to over spritz it i i did it now for the sake of smelling it properly here also because i have all the studio lights on so it's kind of with the heat everything is changed you know this is not the actual real temperature of the of, of let's say the outside and how it would wear if you were to wear it in a normal environment that's not I mean I guess if you want maybe this is the ideal environment to wear it after all because this is a synthetic environment it is a synthetic perfume why not I guess fine let's wear it under studio lights it dries down minus that musk so if you if you dose it correctly that musk will be a little bit more tame and if the musk is a little bit more tame, because it's a very synthetic musk, it won't be headache-inducing at all. You will, however, get wafts of... <sighs> you know, a wafts of, of a vision, of a memory. Uh, can we switch to the frontal camera now so I can, like, talk to you, like... Um... <laughs> wig to wig, person to person. For those of you who have watched Tron in the 80s or the updated version of or Tron 2 or Tron Legacy, but let's just talk about the 80s version because this one still to me is very 80s. This, this perfume, it's so 80s. Not because it smells like any fragrance from the 80s because it doesn't, but it smells of a memory of the 80s. And that is something very poetic. So Envision, this is a trip I go on to when I smell this perfume. It's like I'm in that arcade shop or place and i start playing the game 
and uh, it's an arcade game. And as I play it, I kind of get catapulted inside of it. And I become this 8-bit pixel creature that's inside this virtual world. But the virtual world isn't just all pixels. The virtual world is also made of particular type of colors. And the colors here are that very light, light, light beige and that typical, also very typical for computers in the 80s as well as Nintendo, that special type of um, mattified, opaque, almost porous plastic that had a very, very light gray hue, almost, almost, almost going into white or beige white. And then as that plastic would age, because, you know, back in the 80s, almost all parents were smokers. So whoever was, that plastic would kind of become a bit yellow, beige-ish within a year or two. And then it would have an added smoky smell to it because the plastic was porous back then it would absorb like a sponge also the smells of the environment so at the end of the day it's not just that fresh smell of freshly opened plastic it's also you know console game whatever but it's also that used plastic that's been out in the room for a year or two and then the smells of the house that it absorbed and then you smell that plastic that's what this is it's memory in a bottle. Very, very highly conceptual memory in a bottle. Conceptual to a point where you crave it literally for yourself. And here we get to a very important point because I always say this in my videos. I don't wear perfumes for anybody else but me. And now that we're living in this very crazy time of lockdown, we are alone at home a lot. But I've never, like this year in particular, I've never used so many fragrances like now because, you know, I'm less afraid of overspraying because I'm, I'm less afraid of, you know, somebody outside telling me, you know, too much perfume on you or whatever, which is so irritating to me because like, I'm like, well, then you maybe you should take a shower and start using deodorant. When you start doing that, I might start using less perfume because... I use perfume as a shield when I'm out and about. I use it as a protection cloud so that I can smell myself and not others. I have a very sensitive nose. So to me, I create my own bubble, you know. And now, being at home a lot, the, the good side of it is that I get to really experiment a lot. I go throughout the day sometimes, you know, testing out five, six, seven, eight fragrances on me and just sometimes not even spraying them on me, just like opening them smelling them from the bottle just to remind myself how they smell. And then I move on doing something else, uh, you know, throughout the house and then come back to another perfume, maybe spray a little bit here, there. And I'm loving, I'm living for that. And that's why another reason why I thought, okay, finally, this is the right time for me personally to get uh, Comme des Garçons. The name of this perfume should be Tape, but it's not. In fact, Comme des Garçons did not even name the fragrance. It's just Comme des Garçons. And when you say it that way, you, the next question that comes to mind is, well, is it the first perfume that they released? Hence, it bears the name of the brand. No, it's not the first perfume they released. They released many perfumes prior to 2011. This one came out in 2011, but it's as simple as they could keep it. Meaning, just comme des garçons. It's an eau de parfum concentration. That's it. I call it tape for the sake of finding, referencing it somehow, because otherwise... Try putting um, a description, let's say, in the thumbnail title, just Comme des Garçons perfume review. Your review is going to get lost amongst hundreds of thousands of reviews of all the different perfumes of Comme des Garçons. So, so just to classify it, I would definitely denominate this one as tape or industrial glue or scotch tape. So it doesn't even have a name. The bottle doesn't really have a shape. But it's memory. It's, it's a, oh, wow. I'm actually seeing now when it's backlit, there's little particles floating in there. Wow, you guys. There's like little tiny fractals. Very, very small. They're not, usually when you mix a bottle, you get little bubbles of air. No, this is, these are tiny in various shapes. They look almost as if they were, little particles of plastic 
water or dust. I'm loving this. And the bottle is not only imperfect in its shape, but it's also wavy. It also has little air bubbles within it. It's like, it's so beautiful. I, I live for this stuff. And since I am home a lot, I thought now is the time to experiment with this one and experience it in its full potential and power because while at home, I get to fantasize about it. I'm not really interrupted by how, what I'm usually interrupted by if I'm out and about, by other people talking stories. So I tend to forget the fragrance that I'm wearing because, of course, the fragrance protects me in a way. That's why I wear them out and about. But at home, it's really a conversation. It's you with your perfume. And I just converse with it, you know, and it tells me a lot of stories. This sounds cuckoo, right? Well, I mean, look at me. Look at the whole environment. Cuckoo is the word du jour. Mm, you guys, it on my skin, it's turning clean, delicate. The musk is, is crystallizing. It's becoming very, very prominent together with the hawthorn. To me, those are the two. There is no more glue. There's no more tape. It's all gone. It's just a very, very, very particular type of hawthorn lilac musk that when you inhale it you know maybe it associates us to glue because the smell in the palate sticks like tape or like glue it sticks in this region here in particular of the palate it's a smell that lingers in this area now i classify smells to me some perfumes they stay more to the in the frontal part of the nose do you have that too like do you, i don't know if you ever realized it but like some with some fragrances the smell when they're more gourmand the smell would be more in the palate area some of them i could almost taste them they're almost like on my tongue uh, and some fragrances are more like literally in this frontal part of the nose some are more in the sinus area in the back uh, some mm, fragrances have this weird now you can't say certain things on youtube but let me for those who know will know for those who don't know i'm sorry i can't use direct words for this but there's one particular fragrance and i've i've said this in the review of that fragrance and that is noble leather uh, by yves saint laurent unfortunately it's been discontinued that one sticks itself when you smell it <laughs> in, in the back of the tongue and the beginning of the palate, and it numbs it a little bit. You're a little bit numbed and you feel really good. So imagine what that perfume smells like. You do the math. But um, this one... <laughs> It's deeper. It's in this area and it kind of like expands when it's there and you smell it here and it feels like it's slightly suffocating, but in a good way, you know, and that's where that effect of glue comes in because you feel like everything is like, whoop, like expanded, you know, like when you put glue out, it kind of like expands a little bit on the surface. And then if you're going to glue to parts of two objects together, you press them, then the glue expands underneath the pressure of the two uh, objects. And you feel that a little bit in this area. That's where the smell is most prominent to me. That's where I, that's where it captivates me. And then from there, as you inhale it, it expands. And then as you exhale, because we also always tend to forget, well, we, we don't, some of us don't, but people that are just occasional perfume users don't think about perfumes as much as I do right now you know I'm obsessing about perfumes but a perfume smells in two ways mechanically just mechanically speaking there is a smell it gives us when we inhale it and that's the effect that for example in this case of the Comme des Gassons, it expands here and then when you exhale you get the second part of the smell so by inhaling it, it expands here. And then as I exhale, it elevates itself. It goes up here. And that's where it's as if like you're pressing through a filter, the, the, the perfume. And then what comes out is the most refined part of it. And that's where the lilac and that um, suede, leathery mm, saffron come into play, you know. So you inhale. We get that 80s blast of memory 
musk and synthetic florals by exhaling it pushes to the to the brain all those visions of, of 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 the leather and the saffron and that goes on as you experience this perfume throughout the day so it is demanding if you really want to think about this fragrance it's demanding it, it takes your time it, it's a concept and that's thank god it's a concept this is what niche should be this is what niche should be if you're ready for it it makes you think it makes you go in that direction where you're like okay huh never thought of it that way this opened up another thought process. It opened up another way of thinking. It opened up another way of seeing things, of perceiving things, and another way of smelling things. So I am in this Tron landscape as a pixel, remember? This 8-bit little creature. And I'm kind of like, a, it's a jump and run situation. I'm like, bup, 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 moving through this landscape, looking around me. Colors are very simple, very basic. Everything is reduced to simplicity. And I love that. You know, I really, I crave that so much. I have the feeling my life has become so crazy and stressful and the fear of the future and what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, we let no certainty. And then, you know, I don't like to talk politics on this channel, but, you know, there's this big election pending. And I know a lot of you watching are not even American, but it doesn't matter because this election is going to influence the whole world. In fact, I often say... I think just because of the influence America has on the entire world, I think it would just be fair that the entire world had the right to vote <laughs> who's going to become the next president of the United States. Right. I think because the influence is so obvious on the entire world. So anyway, there's that. There's, uh, of course, the situation we're going through. Will there be a vaccine or not in the future or soon or not soon? So people losing jobs. I mean... That's why it's nice to actually go to a simp to find my niche alcove where I hide, retreat, find my own space, simplify things. And it's so funny, it's a paradox. Just like Comme de Gasson describes this bottle and its existence as a paradox, the same way the smell, as I mentioned before, it's very complex. It requires you to think about it. But at the same time, once you start thinking about it, it simplifies things. It put things in a very simple perspective. And I love that about it because it just, it does relax me at the end of the day. But it relaxes me in a way that it makes me aware that I actually have used my mind. I have, you know, the little gray cells have been triggered. It makes you feel a little bit more accomplished, you know, in some way, shape or form. So there you have it, guys. The little gray cells feeling accomplished thanks to industrial glue. <laughs> I hope you like this uh, review. If you have, please do thumb up this video, as I always say, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And push the notifications button as well. And never give up on love.